there are parts of that that are, that are good. Because when we look at what an enzyme does, an enzyme has a very specific shape, and it has a very specific molecule that it will hold on to and catalyze a reaction on. An enzyme will not catalyze a reaction on every molecule, only molecules that fit into it, kind of like a key. So the lock and key, and this is a model, the lock and key model explains very well why the enzyme only works on certain things, but it doesn't tell us anything about how the enzyme does what it does. Okay? So it's good for telling us how an enzyme works on only specific things, but not telling us anything about how the enzyme does what it does. The other model that is more accurate is called the induced fit model. Okay? So the induced fit model works like this. So here's the lock and key. Here is the, by the way, the, the thing that the enzyme works on is called a substrate. So the, the molecule that the enzyme catalyzes the reaction on is called the substrate. And we can think of it as having a specific shape. Here's the enzyme with a specific shape. And it does its thing, right? The induced fit model says, well, it's not quite accurate. Because the lock and key model says that the enzyme binds the substrate very specifically, but it doesn't say anything about how the reaction is catalyzed. How is the reaction catalyzed? The induced fit model says, well, not only does the enzyme change the substrate, which it does because it's converting it into product, right? The enzyme is converting the substrate into a product because the product is what's happened after the reaction has been catalyzed on it. The lock and key model says that it makes a product. It doesn't say how. The induced fit model says not only does the enzyme change the substrate, but so too does the, does the substrate transiently change the enzyme. This is why enzymes are different than chemical catalysts. Chemical catalysts do not get changed in a reaction. And enzymes don't get changed in a reaction either, except they do transiently, meaning they bounce back to their original state when it's done. Now I'm going to take you through a mental exercise, and then I'm going to stop that, and I'll remind you of this next time. Okay? So the mental exercise is this. Imagine I've got this enzyme, and you can see they've drawn this with points, and they haven't drawn this very nicely, but you can see these are sort of rounded. Okay? As this substrate is coming into the binding side of the enzyme, we can imagine that the substrate has some charges on it. It has some nonpolar regions on it. It might have hydrogen bonds on it, anything that's going to allow it to interact with this enzyme. As it gets closer to the enzyme, we can imagine that the enzyme now starts changing its shape in response, not unlike hemoglobin did when it bound oxygen. Very slight shape changes. It changes its shape, and now it grabs onto it, and the enzyme is different here than it was here. This now is in a place where it can catalyze a reaction here. It wasn't in a place where it can catalyze a reaction. Maybe it's strained a bit. Maybe it's strained. So maybe to relieve that strain, it pulls this molecule apart. Or it might put two molecules together, depending upon how we're set up. That strain in the enzyme that's caused by the binding facilitates the reaction being catalyzed. I know it's a mouthful, and I am going to say that again, but I'll ask if you have any quick questions about what I've just said. Is it Friday afternoon? Should we do a song and then call it a week? OK. I've got a song that I hope you will join me in. You guys have not been very good about singing very loud here, so I want to hear you sing loud. This is another Christmas song. It's called Oh Little Protein Molecule. Oh little protein molecule, you're lovely and serene. With 20 zwitter ions like cysteine and alanine. Your secondary structure has pitches and repeats arranged in alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. The Ramachandran plots are predictions made to try 
to tell the structures you can have for angles phi and psi and tertiary structure give polypeptide zing. I can't hear you. Because of magic that occurs in protein folding. You can sing with me this part too. A folded enzyme's active and starts to catalyze. When activators bind into its allosteric sites, we'll talk about that later. Some other mechanisms control the enzyme rates by regulating synthesis and placement of phosphates. And all the regulation that's found inside of cells reminds the students learning it a pathway straight from hell. So here's how to remember the phosphate strategies. They turn the GPBs to A's and GSAs to B's. And we'll talk about that later too. Okay, thank you guys. See you on Monday. How you doing? Pretty Yep. Um, when a protease cuts, um, like when tryptophan cuts at a argon or lysine, uh -huh. does it just leave it unbalanced? You still basically have like a couple of acid, or does it bind? I'm sorry. Say it again. Does it leave that pe peptide bound? Uh, peptide bind? Uh, the peptide uh, bond. The amine and the. Um, yeah. yeah, so before they were joined together, when it breaks that, it makes them free. So now you've got a, a carboxyl where there wasn't one before, and you've got an amine where there wasn't one before. And there's nothing preventing from rebinding other than just... The They're not going to rebind, because they have to be positioned properly, and it's, it's gone at that point. Right. Yep. Makes sense? Yep. Good. Yes, sir. If, uh, the temperature that an enzyme in, uh, is over, you know, I guess the peak, and then it starts denaturing. Uh-huh. If the temperature cools back down to its optimum range, yep. can it start working again, or is it... Well, it depends on the protein. So okay. most proteins, once you unfold them, they don't fold back. Okay. Most of them. So that's why you cook an egg. Okay. You cook an egg so that you take... What you're doing in cooking an egg is you're taking proteins that are dissolved in water. That's why you have a gooey sub, uh, substrate there. And when you denature them, they sort of fold inside out. And so the water that was on the outside now goes to the inside, uh, and that's why it becomes solid. Oh. And they don't refold back yeah. when you cool it down. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yep.